Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Um, right, I think we've done most of the unpacking now in videos, and I'm glad to see you all enjoyed our um, little escapade with the funnel web. Um, she is now safely back in her box and up on the shelf, and uh, camera lady has finally calmed down and is uh, back to normal. Well, as normal as can be for camera lady. And um, we noticed that out of all the spiders that came up on the unboxing videos, the two unpacking videos that we've done, um, one of the ones that really shone out was the Megaphobema robustum, which is the Colombian red leg, I believe. Now, as the name suggests, these guys come from Colombia. Now then, so what we're going to do, we are going to rehouse them. They are currently in these bra plast tubs. We're now going to move them over and we're going to put them in these five litre, uh, really useful rubs. And we've looked at many, many different types of tubs over the, over the years and that. And to be honest, these guys, these are probably one of the best because structurally they are very, very strong. You can stack them without fear of them collapsing or anything. And they have got lockable, easy lids, which means that obviously we're not gonna suffer with escapees. So what we're gonna do, these do not come with any ventilation whatsoever, nothing at all. So we are gonna to have to put our own air holes in there. Now, you've seen us do this with other tubs, um, bits and pieces as well. So we're gonna quickly run through it again and show you what we do. We just get a piece of masking tape. We don't have to get very technical about this. So we literally just put our piece of masking tape in there, like so. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. All this does is it keeps it clean and it gives us something to mark our actual holes where we want them. So we've done that. And then all we do is we take our tape measure and you can do this to however you want. I personally is just gonna run the holes two thirds of the way up. So we're gonna run them through here. Now we're not gonna put many in. We are only literally gonna put three on each side. So we're just literally running these two centimeters from the lip. So we turn that over and we do the same on this side. Now you clever ones will realize now that our holes are gonna be off center to one another, which isn't gonna be a problem. If anything, it might just increase a little bit of airflow. So all we've done is we've put our holes in. Now, we're gonna cut our holes. We hear so many different things about how people make the holes in their boxes. Now I'll let you into a little tip. This is a step drill that we're using here. And I don't know if camera lady can pick that up on camera, but you'll see there's tiny little indentations here and it's in the form, the drill is in the form of a cone. Yeah, and you can see these lines. Each line is a different depth that that step drill will run to. So all we do is we choose the size hole that we want and we put a little bit of masking tape around the bit so that we know that we can drill from there up to there and that will give us the right size hole that we desire. Now the beauty of using a step drill is one, it's very, very accurate. Two, it cuts really cleanly and it, it won't, if you're careful, it will not split your tub. So you get a nice, clean, even hole. Now all we do is we just put that on our marker there and we drill in. There you go. Right down to the, the tape that we put on there and there's our hole. We see this one now, you should get a good close up of this. You can see how this works. See how clean that is? Beautiful. Really, really nice. Same on this one. Nice and clean. So I'm gonna do the same on this side. Over there. There you go. It is literally that simple. And all we do, take our bit of tape off because we don't need that anymore. 
and we've got our three lines all in a nice clean line in a in a row. Now, as you know, I don't like wavy lines. So by doing it like this, it means that all my all my tubs will all look the same. Now, we you might be sitting there thinking to yourselves, well, there aren't very many air holes in that enclosure. And you'd be right, they're in. And the reason being is because we don't want to overdo it. Because we don't want too much ventilation in there. The Robustum is a tropical spider from Colombia and he likes a high humidity so we're looking at a region of 75 to 85 percent humidity so what we are hoping to achieve here is that humidity within this box now by having the holes either side of the box this will give us our cross ventilation now if we find at a later date because these guys like it quite warm and all this box will sweat a little bit so what we do is we drilled our holes in the sides <clears throat> if we find that after some time this is not enough ventilation and we're starting to get water beading in the roof on the on the lid then what we can do is we can come back to this and we can drill some holes in the lid now what we need to do really is run these and find out how much ventilation they're actually going to need. Now, we hear an awful lot about cross ventilation and ventilation in general with spiders. In your room, for argument's sake, like in here now in our spider room, we don't really get a lot of air movement. So your cross ventilation is in fact very, very limited. Even if you completely filled this full of holes, it is still going to be really, really limited. And um, it's, a, it's a funny old subject because it's been knocking around the hobby for some time, especially with things like Avix, Celadonia, all these types of spiders. Everyone screams about cross ventilation. And yet, what do they do? They fill their tubs up with holes and then they ram them all on the shelf. There is no cross ventilation on that shelf. There's no airflow. If we had fans running in our room, drawing air out and taking it outside, then we would in fact be creating ventilation. We're drawing the air around the room. If it's like in here now, there is no real air movement, apart from when we come in and we open the door. So bear that in mind. It's a really, really, um, pardon? Yes, it is. It's very, very misunderstood. Um, the problem is, is the actual, the basic understanding of it, everyone can get to grips with. But what they don't seem to understand is how it works in their given situation. Pardon? In a, yeah, in a, in, a, in a finer sense it would be, but it's, you, can't, you can't get cross ventilation in a still room. It just doesn't work. Right, so now what we're doing is we are going to literally fill these up. Now this is just a normal potting compost. I think, I think my... My cup has just about had it. So we can break this up a little bit. Now this is already damp. It's got a good dampness to it already. So what we want to do, we're going to sort of fill this up about a third of the way. And what's that's going to give us? So that's roughly about three cupfuls of soil in a five litre tub. Ooh. There was only two in that one, but look, it's almost filled it up. So, I reckon we'll go about two and a half, and we're probably about somewhere sensible. All right. Be 
because my tub is collapsing, it's not holding a full cup. I'm getting one in there. So what we're looking for, almost about half full. So that's good enough. And what this is going to do, by having a decent depth of soil in here, this will help hold the moisture in. It won't dry out quite so quick. It's probably still going to have to monitor it. This is the thing. Right, so we're going to do that. We've got that in there. Now we're going to add a little bit of our moss, which is already wet as well. So we're going to throw a nice little handful of that in each one. And we'll do that. And what this will do, we'll just mix it in a little bit. This will help lock in some moisture as well. Because obviously we're not going to use live, oh, excuse me, we're not going to use live moss in these because it, it won't be getting enough light and it'll just die off. So we're going to use the sphagnum moss that they use for hanging baskets. And this will also help as well when our spider starts to burrow down. This will give the soil some integrity and it will help the um, the sides of when they dig down, they will hold together a little bit better. Right, so that's that. Now we're going to give these guys a really good sized water bowl as well. Because what we're going to do, we're aiming at literally, we don't want to be spraying these tanks, these enclosures. We're not going to spray them. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill up their water bowls and then as time goes along we will just literally overflow that water bowl and then that will give us the amount of moisture we can control our moisture using that method so we're just all right so we're literally just going to fill these up Now we don't need to overflow them now because our, we've got plenty of moisture within our soil as it is and the moss that we've added. Now I don't know if you could hear that tapping away. That was one of our mature male sturmies letting the ladies know that he is around. quite eerie actually especially early hours of the morning you feel like there's someone walking around your house gets you up and about real early <laughs> right then what we're going to do now is we are going to take our spiders and hopefully we're going to get a really nice look now we're going to use the bark that is already in in the enclosure that they're in now What a wonderful, wonderful looking spider. Behave yourself. Can you hear that? Absolutely astounding. All right. I'll bring this over. Look at that for an absolutely beautiful spider. Go around that way. You get the light. Now, as we said, these guys come from Colombia. And these are a new world spider. They're not an aggressive spider. And they're not particularly defensive either. Although they do have um, an interesting form of defense. They will stick their abdomen way up in the air. And they have actually got, it's said that they have barbs on their back legs. Which they can, they spin themselves around. And they can use these barbs to defend themselves against predators. And as you can see, it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous spider. 
You see this really, really black, I think you might have noticed actually, guys, I've got my paintbrush back. <laughs> Drama's over. <laughs> yeah. God help the funnel web now. We are fully armed. Now, um, as you can see here, they have this beautiful jet black carapace, and the first portion of the leg there is jet black, and then they have this beautiful orange red in the legs. Now, these guys, as we said, are a New, York, New World spider, and these can get up to eight inches in leg span. That's a big spider. Very, very big spider. As you can see, they're very, very cautious in the way they move. They're a reasonably fast growing spider. What we're going to do now, we're going to put this over to the side here. She's found the paintbrush herself here. Maybe we can just walk her out. Hopefully. See how she just wants to dig down. That's it. Get your legs over the edge. In you go. In we go. Now, as we said, they they are actually quite skittish. This one is fairly easy going. So that's that one in. Now, one of the problems with these guys is when they molt, they are rather prone to um, destroying their molts. There we go. Look at the light on that. Absolutely beautiful. So yes, it can be a little bit awkward to find and get a really good malt. So what we're going to do, we're going to put this one across here. We're going to sit the lid just on top for the moment. And we're going to get the next one. Now this one is actually hiding underneath its bit of bark already. So we're going to I have to lift this up. There we go. Once again, you can see that. See the way it's holding its abdomen up. Oh, a little, little bit of hair kicking. Now, see, look, this one's far more defensive. See how the way it look, look at that. Look, it's forcing its rear end towards the aggressor, which is us. Mm -hmm. We can go this way. There we go. Interesting behavior. See this? That's not want to go backwards. Look at that. Very interesting. Doesn't want to leave. She's got that bug. There we go. I'll take this away because we don't want that. Isn't it interesting that she's holding on to that piece of web in there. There's nothing in it. There we go. See the amount of webbing that she's laying down already. See all that web in there? Masses of it. Oops, masses of it. Now, when these are young like these guys, they will spend a fair amount of time literally burrowed away. And as they get older and get bigger, 
they will come out and about a whole lot more. All right, what we'll do is we'll separate these boxes a little bit. Get this one out. So this one's the smallest one of the lot. It's the smallest one with the biggest hide. Look at that. It's not a lot of difference in their size wise actually. As we can see with this one now, this is already in sort of that semi defensive pose with its bum in the air. What we're going to do now, whoa, now this is the first one that's actually jumped. And it's, and it's walking forwards. How about that? There we go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely beautiful. Now, in terms of um, temperature, these guys require it relatively high. So we're looking in the high 70s to the low 80s. Um, so with a, with a humidity of around about the same. So what we're going to do with these guys is we're going to put these up on the top shelf where they're going to be getting plenty of warmth and they'll be nice. This one's found its home. It's literally going away now. It didn't really hang about. Look at that. It's found its, found its way in there already. They look absolutely wonderful on this sort of substrate. So with these guys, these are sit now sitting in a five liter tub. And as you can see, that's more than adequate. Plenty of room for these. Now at the moment, these are probably sitting in around about three inches or so. And they will get up to six to eight inches, which is a formidable size spider. That is a big, big spider. And they should hopefully become calmer as they mature, although they're not bad now. So we're going to put them up on the top shelves. This will, in actual fact, by keeping them warm, it will give them a really good appetite as well. So we're feeding these at the moment. These are taking adult dubia roaches without any problems at all. And they are good feeders. They feed really, really well. So we have to be careful not to overfeed them. We want to give them just enough that they grow on nicely and they mature nice and steadily. We have got a male coming. These are all females. So we've got the three females here. This is a future project. We've had them for a while, but we've not mentioned them before. And uh, they sort of slipped out when we were doing the unpacking. So uh, you've, you've got a bit of a, an early viewing of these guys. So they're going to be a future breeding project. And hopefully we'll, we'll get some youngsters because they are absolutely fantastic. So that is how we're going to keep our robustums. And uh, they've been, we've been doing this now for the last few months, and they've been doing really, really well under this kind of regime. So now we've got them in the bigger tubs, we'll put them up, we're going to give them a little bit more heat than what they've had. So this will, um, in turn, uh, fire them up a little bit as well. And then hopefully, next year or so, we'll be able to have a go at breeding them. I would have thought by the middle of next year, to the end of next year we'll be ready. So that is them. Now, as we said before, when we, um, we were doing the unpacking, we're gonna have to relook at how we house an awful lot of spiders. And I know a lot of you guys keep your spiders in these types of tubs. So it's gonna be an interesting thing. We used to use these an awful lot in the reptiles, do it and use them with that and they were absolutely fine. Um, so we're now going to, we have used them with the spiders, but I've always favoured the glass tanks. But now we're going to have to go back to this type of thing. And hopefully we can stack these up. It just means visually we have to be a little bit more on the ball when it comes to actually looking after our spiders. Because we have to physically get these down and check them out. Whereas before, with the glass tanks, we can come in at night time with a torch and we can see how everybody's doing. Much, much easier and quicker. This is a little bit more labour intensive but it should be fine, should be fine. Right then, well I hope you uh, like seeing our Robustum again. I think they're a fabulous spider. Um, and I can't wait for them to reach full maturity. They are gonna be absolute stunners. Right then, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I'll see you soon guys.